Hey everybody, welcome back to Dungeon Maker here on the World of Madness server. Continuing in my quest to become even more maniacal every time I have to say that. Well, uh, there's been a fair bit of progress over here at the Hubris Grinder, or the Hubris Upper Grinder, or the Upper Container, or... Re I've had a lot of names for this thing so far, and right now I'm just gonna call it the Harvester. Um, fair bit less progress actually than I was expecting to have, because I was expecting to put a bunch of effort into making this place look very pretty, for a certain value of pretty, considering I'm basing this on the harvesters from the Matrix. Um, but I realized that in order to actually make it look pretty, I have to first make sure that it works in all of those lovely little uh, aspects that I need for this particular grinder. So foolishly, I put out a tweet with a poll asking people if it would be worth me making a bi-directional funnel. Unfortunately, everyone said yes, with about 66 odd percent uh, compliance to that. So, here is what we currently have. Uh, most of our old platform is gone at this stage, we're now onto pretty much brand new territory. And oh, it looks like somebody made it down here. Yeah, every now and then this fails, but that's something to discuss in a quick moment once I murder this guy. Flip. Nope. Uh uh. Bad. I you can hit most things here, but I don't have to worry about that. So, the piece that I was actually tweeting about was up here. And I came up with this on a whim in the dead of night when I tried to think of, okay, this is pumping out so many mobs, it would be almost foolish of me to not factor in XP grinding. But to do so, I would need to distinctly change the kill zone from insta-death, which is what this is meant to be, or insta or very quickly death, to down to half a half or very close to it. Now I tried for a bit to experiment with uh, dispensers with water in them, to uh, different uh, piston designs using slime block, which I don't really have enough slime for it anyways, but yeah. And eventually I, I came to the conclusion that it was basically just not going to work. So, instead, uh, I came up with this sort of bi-directional flusher design that's just right here. And basically that's just a pair of dispensers on either side. And when you flip the switch down here, it goes into this edge trigger up here and it triggers all four of them so that they toggle, basically. So the two that are on turn off and the two that are off turn on. And that alters the direction that mobs get flushed when they fall into this central area. Wait, they are collected by both of the ones above. Yay. And that got me killed a fair few different times, as you can tell by the footage here. But I succeeded, eventually. I lost my good digging pick, and I lost my bow, and I lost a couple pieces of an unenchanted diamond armor, but that's... Eh, that's, that's not a huge problem. Especially now. So, I got that working, and then I had to get the... Uh, the actual killing zone down here to work properly. And this has to deal with mobs that have not fallen as far as the others. Mobs who are wearing enchanted boots, so they have feather falling and don't necessarily die on impact from a regular distance. Mobs that might try to heal themselves. So this is a grand total of 30 blocks from the top there where they start to drop down to the actual base. Which is one block, to my knowledge, lower and then it needs to be to kill witches, who have 26 health. Uh, of course, Endermen have 40, but they don't spawn in this grinder, so that's not really worth considering. Spiders are still kind of a problem, but the majority of them do fall down here and die, and the ones that go up there eventually despawn by virtue of being too far away. Wait, so it's not that big of a concern there. And it works pretty well. We've got the magma blocks down here to ensure that everything that comes down here at least eventually dies, the exception being a witch that might turn up and have, uh, might, might turn up and have a fire resistance potion on hand, but because of the, the sheer distance they don't, we just tend to die, just quite happily. That's no worry. And then all of the drops come through here into this loop where they go through six progressive uh, sorters, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that filters out all of the arrows, the bones, the gunpowder, the string, the rotten flesh, and then 
anything else, pretty much. And I previously just had these on a singular double chest, but oh boy, did those get full very quickly. And I gotta say, I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to have to hook up a level system here so that uh, it only goes to so far, and then it will actually start to eject items and bomb ones. But I'm not entirely certain how I'm going to do that, but this is just a very simple sorter system that we can see here. Items come through, they hit the right filter, and then they get shunted in here. Very straightforward. Nothing terribly complex, just time-consuming and difficult to build when you're this high in the altitudes. But, as you can tell by my current level of 41, it's working okay. Oh yes, and this is just half slabs on top of hoppers, which is functional anyways. Down there, it has to be, um, it has to be minecarts with hoppers in them, or else they can't actually grab things on the other side of the blocks. But, uh, working just fine here. If I switch this over, we'll soon start to see mobs grabbing up to space down here. And the only thing that doesn't survive in either case here is the spiders. Spiders have lower health than most mobs, uh, so consequently they just don't survive. And all of these guys can just be whacked with your fist, but for a maximum effect I do recommend using a sword. Oh yeah, we have a few spider buddies. Well, nothing can escape here anyway, because thanks to these uh, fences, this is actually about this tall. It's not escapable by anything. And I can just... Stand here, wander around. I could use a stone sword if I want, but just ugh, so so good. All that lovely experience. Ooh, I think I got a hedge there. Guess I'll find that momentarily if I miss the game. I go and check the loot. But yes, we can see this is incredibly effective. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's just grab that XP, save the sound. They can't even see this, so I don't worry about hitting me much. Did we actually get a... Oh, yeah, there's one of the zombies with uh, kind of one there, Enchanted Gear, because the local difficulty has gone up quite a bit. Oh, joy, rain. Ah. Is there a skull there? I could have sworn I saw a skull. It might still be filtering through. At least I presume that'd be the case. Yeah. Oh well, it'll turn up there either way. But, we also got more disc. Yay! So, let's hop over to the drone, because there's a bunch of sort of quality of life improvements up here, you might be able to notice, um, that are really only visible if you are an airborne entity. So, over to our drone here. Okay, so here we are with the drone. Unfortunately, it's still raining, but clear. So, the first thing that I did when I was working on this to make it a little bit more user-friendly, especially for maintenance, was I added these redstone lamps at the corners, and these are directly tied to the lines that control detecting of the presence of mobs. So, if any mob is inside of these, these lights turn on. If they're not, then they're all turned off, and we can just see them blinking on and off as mobs are flushed out. And I could have just replaced all of these, uh, more or less all of these half slabs here of redstone lamps, and it would have given us a nice little ticker line as things were flushed towards the center, but it would have been a lot of lighting updates, it would have been a lot of glowstone and a lot of redstone, and ultimately I think it looks a lot better this way. The other thing that I added, if we come around to here, is this internal level of lights, and this indicates the status of the actual pads, so it tells us which ones are currently being flushed. And it does that because I originally started this with just keeping tabs on uh, using, a, using an additional dispenser that would dispense things so I could say a lava pool somewhere, and they would tell me which ones were turned on and off, but that proved to be unreliable. But then I realized all of these dispensers only have one item in them this bucket or water bucket, and a bucket stacks to 16, a water bucket is one stack only, so that means it has a different comparator signal, namely one or two. So with that, I was able to create this little inverted signal that creates a light whenever a particular uh, line of dispensers has been emptied, ergo the pad is on. And then the last little additional thing here is that we have these redstone lamps in the middle, which gives us the status of the actual uh, internal timer. So between all those three, we can tell which ones have 
been triggered, which ones are ticking over, and which ones are still flooded, which then allows us to come through in the event of uh, maintenance requirements to hit these buttons to toggle uh, one that becomes stuck at some point. It also gives us a very clear idea of which ones have been stuck on. So consequently, we now have a perfectly serviceable system, which is highly efficient and effective. And if we come around to here, let me just see if I can turn my brightness up. Good. You guys are, yep, we're good. Uh, here we have our little edge trigger here, which is a little bit squished. I need to try and figure out if I can make it too wide and still have the, right, the same uh, functionality, but I think it's good for the time being. And that is just a straight old torch line upwards because it's, it's even today it's still very much one of the uh, the most simplest and fastest ways to deal with vertical redstone even if it is a little bit heavy but who knows I might change that to something a little piston later on and that just controls these dispensers in here which I do have a little bit of accidental uh, filtering one side or the other based on this because they can occasionally come through and get, uh, in the case of high high load situations, they'll get nudged over to the one side, which they should be, but I might try tinkering a little bit to try and at least get some kind of block to be pistoned out here to really, really fix that up, but for the time being it's fine. So it, it's such a small edge case scenario that I really don't need to worry about it terribly too much. And what I'm thinking, which you can probably guess by this circle up here, this circle here is going to be the back of our Matrix Fetus Harvester, which is a sentence I really would not like to say very often, so I'm just going to keep calling it Harvester. And that will descend down low to the point where it covers the majority of what we currently have here. And that is so that... I don't, that, that's why I decided to do more of this building, to make sure everything was functional before I started making the nice aesthetic exterior, was because I needed to know how low to bring that ring. And then down here, the sort of forward section here, where I'm currently standing, I'm getting quite drenched, is where we'll move our portal, where we'll have uh, different things we can use, so different things like a uh, automated uh, furnace array or a crafting section, or an ender chest, and all sorts. So that people can come through, they can hang out for a little bit around here whilst they wait for things to uh, spawn inside of the grinder and get caught up if they're using it for XP, or just ground to dust if they're using it for drops. And then they can grab their items, grab their XP, and be on their merry way. Uh, I might, to that notion, move the... Uh, move the beacon back here, depending on size. I think I might be able to do that at the very least. I can just put it under here. And uh, I'll also obviously want to have an XP. We'll, 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 if next to the XP, at least we'll want to have some kind of enchanting setup. So probably I'll have the beacon uh, maybe around, maybe somewhere near the items here. So it's just like coming up in the middle. I can just have like a, a quartet of uh, beacons just under here, maybe. Which shouldn't take me very much time, considering I can now make some very highly enchanted diamond tools and equipment. Yay for me. But that is it for the moment. Let's hop back to our main guy here. The good guy, the best guy. The lying. Cool. So, hope you've all enjoyed that little thing. I don't get the, I don't get the drone out nearly as much as I should, possibly. I have that whole camera can. I should really use him a bit more. Uh, okay. Is that seriously turned on? No? Hmm. I've just been too far away for it to get rid of Witches are still a massive pain in the neck. Because the witches heal up. The witches are always going to be a problem here, I think. Because I just cannot deal enough damage to these things. He's not about a bow and arrow, but thankfully I have one. It's not as good as my old hit, hit and bow, but it'll do. And there we are, I'm up to past 43 levels, and I haven't really had to do anything. Uh, I should maybe have a... I, I should have maybe some uh, auxiliary hoppers around here so people can chuck drops that they accidentally pick up in. Hmm. And I will be giving this a nice facade, I'll be filling it out a lot more. I'll have uh, indicators on here, like item frames, to show uh, what items are being sorted into where. And we'll just chuck these into there. There we go. 
Uh, did we get a skull in here? No, I must have just imagined it then. Yeah, that's a pity. Or else it's still filtering through. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if anyone has any ideas on how I could improve this, on how I could make it prettier, I am liking the prismarine highlights in the predominantly grey structure. It doesn't necessarily mesh well with the gra with the granite, but the granite is going to be mostly uh, discreet anyway, so more or less up here will be about the only place you can see it, because I'm not filling out this entire thing, and I don't want to block off the view of this, uh, full, uh, of this full funnel system. But uh, I'll probably bring this down a bit so that it's more of a solid object, yeah. like a, a platform, if you will. And probably the same again here. Uh, I'll be bringing down the maintenance ladders down to the more or more on uh, the mid-level there and all sorts. But uh, I am curious what kind of things I should have around here, how I should have things around here running, what level of automation I should have around here, because if I have a furnace array, then that's one less thing that you have to do around here, because you can just leave it to the system. But... If I give you a fully automated furnace ray, that's one less uh, concern for you. Uh, and also, that's potentially another source of XP that you can give. If you have to feed it with... Uh, if, if you have to divvy up the items, if you have to divvy up the fuel and all sorts, then that's one more thing you can use to occupy your time. Not you, not you are waiting for very long around here. As we saw there, we gathered quite a few mobs in just a short span of time. I think I've sneaked up to about 80, which I'm guessing... Uh, is about the uh, hostile mob cap on the server because otherwise we'd be seeing it go to much higher numbers. But uh, yeah, that this place is very functional. I hmm, I'm at a loss to decide if it's more or less functional as a mob grinder than the monument. Uh, the uh, the Guardian Grinder that we made, because this actually gives us XP, and it gives us a greater variety of mob drops. But the Guardian Grinder does run very quickly. Hmm. Either way, this is going to be very helpful for us, because being able to get a reliable supply of enchanted uh, tools, as well as things like gunpowder and string, and all sorts beyond it, because we are actually getting glowstone and redstone out of this, which is lovely. Um, as well as some, like, potion supplies, which will also go also great. Oh, good. Finally. Rain stops just in time for dawn. Here. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm, I'm loving this place. I'm having a lot of fun here. I, I, I know we keep track of how many deaths we each have, but I can only see that above other people's heads. I don't know how many deaths I have, but considering I've built two different mob grinders now, I'm guessing it's pretty high. But such is the wage of those who toil in dungeons. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed, and I shall catch you all yeah, next time.